Good morning and happy Easter. I would like to welcome all of you in the name of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. I'd also like to say thank you, everyone, for making this staying at home season. Our Sunday school teachers have been so creative every Sunday. Especially Jody is live streaming on Facebook and Zoom every Sunday morning. And all teachers made a special Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday kits to hand out and set them on our church north door for pickup. Also, we had, a we had a special Palm Sunday parade last Sunday after service. Uh, please take a look. Good morning. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Brothers and sisters, I believe you are standing in the crowd and welcoming Jesus today. You can bring your problem, but let us accept Jesus as your spiritual savior and spiritually follow him first. Thank you for coming and making this very special. Today, as we celebrate our Lord's resurrection, we'll have the Holy Communion during the service. If you haven't prepared for this, I'd encourage you to have some bread and juice or wine. If you don't have juice, that's okay. Churches did communion with only bread for 100 of years. We're going to start the service on time at 10. While the last prelude is playing, let's center our heart to the risen Christ.
Good morning and happy Easter. Please join me for the call to worship. Don't weep, don't mourn. There is great good news. Christ the Lord is risen today. Put away your garments of mourning. Let the light of God's love flood into your lives. Christ the Lord is risen today. No more do we have to fear the darkness. It has been overcome by God's light. Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Please join us for the opening hymn, number 302, Christ the Lord is risen today, verses 1 through 4. Rejoicing in this day of resurrection, we have come to celebrate the strength of your love, a love that triumphs even over death. As we exult in the miracle of your incarnate love, we thank you for the opportunity to encounter the risen Christ here in our midst. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to our Easter Sunday service. Isn't it amazing? Boys and girls, that it's already Easter? I can't believe it. it's already Easter. You know, I kind of feel a little bit like Mary when she went down to the tomb. And I know most of you boys and girls know this story. But she went down to the tomb, and the stone was rolled away. And she couldn't figure out what the heck had happened. And then the angel came and spoke to her and said, The person that you're seeking, he is not here. He has risen. 
And she wondered about that. And she went back and she told everyone that Jesus had risen. Even though Jesus had told her the story before he died, she really didn't understand it. And boys and girls, you know, it's kind of hard for us to understand it too. Because we all have people in our lives that have died and passed on, and then we don't see them no more. They're not here. But we know in our heart that they're in heaven. And that is the most wonderful thing about Easter, boys and girls, that when Jesus died, he rose again. He rose to heaven and made a way for us. Now, remember last Sunday when we were talking about Palm Sunday, and I know some of you got palms, and they had a parade and they were waving the palms up and down and everybody was singing and it was a joyful time and Jesus came riding in on a donkey and they were singing praises to him and Hosanna in the highest and hallelujah. And then a week later, the people are crying out and saying, crucify him, crucify him. What a change. What a change that one week made, boys and girls. One week only. But you know what? Jesus didn't change. We changed. We changed in the things that we did to him. And now, boys and girls, that it's Easter, and I know the mystery of Easter is maybe a little bit hard for you to understand, but you have to understand one thing, boys and girls. When we put Jesus in our heart, when we come to that realization that we are a sinner, we were born into sin, and and we've done some terrible things, things that, that we're ashamed of and, and things that our parents are ashamed of and, and we're sorry for it, we repent. And that's when we might cry or we feel so sad in our heart and we get like broken. We get broken, boys and girls. And then we ask Jesus to forgive us. And after Jesus forgives us, we have a new life. We have a brand new life. And that's why Jesus died for us, boys and girls, so that we can have that new life. And there is going to come a day, and I hope not for a long, 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 long time, but there's going to come a day when your time for death is near. And you're going to cry out to Jesus to save you. I hope you have him saved in your heart long before that. And I know most of you do that are watching this because I've led most of you to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But there's going to come a time when your body will die and your soul and your spirit will rise up to be with Jesus in the heavens. And that's what Easter is all about. He came so that we can have eternal life, so that we will die no more, so that we can be where Jesus is. And he tells us in his word, where I am, there you will be also. And that place is in heaven, boys and girls. That's where we really need to be. So this Easter season, as we are home and, and maybe your mom's going to cook a ham or a turkey or a chicken and you have a special celebration in your home, remember one thing, boys and girls, and always hide it in your heart, that Jesus is alive. He is not dead in some tomb. There's no grave in the whole world that has his name on it. There's no headstone that says, here lies Jesus. He's not there because he's seated at the right hand of God the Father. And he's also in our heart through his spirit. He's in our hearts, boys and girls. And that is the good news that we share with everybody that we meet, that Jesus is alive. And he's alive in us. And he's alive in our heart. So even though things in our world change, and we're in a very, very difficult change right now in our own lives, boys and girls, but we can always rest assured one thing that never changes, and that is Jesus. He never changes, boys and girls. He's always the same. He was the same the very day that he died. He's the same 10 years ago. He's the same right now, and he's going to be the same 10 years from now, should he tarry that long and not come back and take us home. He never changes. He's always the same. So we can rest assured in that, boys and girls. And I want you to know, too, that I really, really miss you. I miss you so much. I miss not seeing your happy faces. I miss not coming to church and singing songs with everybody. And I miss all the people that are here in the pews. I miss everybody and I miss not going out. I miss all of that. But that even makes us more determined, boys and girls, that when the time comes, when it's okay for us to greet each other and, and to love each other and to accept each other, what a day that will be. What a day that will be, boys and girls. 
So close your eyes, fold your hands, and let's have a prayer. Dear kind Heavenly Father, we know that our world is changing. But one thing that we can rest assured is that you never change, boys and girls. Jesus never changes. He's always the same. And Lord, we thank you so much that you died for us, that you died a terrible death so that we could live. I'm so thankful for that, Lord. And I know all of these boys and girls out in, in Facebook land or Zoom land or, or however they're watching this, Lord Jesus, I know their hearts are open to receive from you. So I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, to touch every single child, to touch their hearts and their minds and give them your peace, your peace that passes all understanding, that, that perfect peace, Lord, that comes into our hearts that lets us know that everything is okay. Because of what you did, we can rest assured in that. We thank you and praise you, Lord Jesus. Watch over us, keep us safe, and end this silly virus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Happy Easter, boys and girls. See you soon. God bless you. God loves you. At this time, I would like to invite you to Joy's Concerns Prayers. Yes, we all need prayers. Please. Um, let us know to pray with you and for you together. You could please send your prayers, concerns, joys through email. You know my email, hojin.shin at iaumc.net. And you could send it to church secretary's email, or you could text me. Let us bow to the Lord. O glorious God of new life, we are incredibly thankful to be able to still come together and celebrate Easter. We believe and worship you for raising our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. God, come to, our, come to all your sons and daughters. We worship from our own holy places Come and accept our worship and bless us. Lord, though we are physically separated, fill our hearts with the same joy and hope of resurrection as always. Lord, on this victorious morning, we humbly confess that we are weak. We are weak when trials come. We shake and fear the invisible. Lord, forgive us. Risen Jesus, come and tell us shalom like you did to the disciples. Strengthen our hearts so that we can rise again and love you and love our neighbors. Lord, we lift up our beloved elderly in the community and other friends who are most vulnerable to this virus. We ask that you protect them. We lift up those who are fighting against the virus. Lord, protect them. We lift up those who are struggling financially. Lord, Bless them. We lift up those whose surgery or treatment has been postponed. Lord of healing, work your power in them. We lift up our young students. Lord, pour out your wisdom and understanding upon them. Lord of resurrection, be with us this morning. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, who has been raised from the dead. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, 
and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and go to Galilee. There they will see me. This ends our reading. Christ is the reason. He is reason indeed. I praise and thank God for sending his only son to this world and his wonderful providence of salvation by Jesus' crucifixion, which redeemed our sins. I glorify our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself up to death and obeyed. And I bring great glory to God, who raised him from the power of death. Hallelujah! I would like to bless all of you who believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and gathered to worship at your church, our church at home this morning, like Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. In 2006, I had an opportunity to travel to the Holy Land right after Easter Sunday. The guide was leading our team, our group, to what he thought to be uh, Jesus' tomb on a certain morning. He was very knowledgeable and explained uh, that three uh, places known to possible, uh, possibly be Jesus' tomb. The third one is considered the most likely to be the real one. That was where I was going to, and, and I was very excited in that moment. Finally, we arrived at the tomb, and the, um, the t entrance of the tomb, where we know the big stone was um, rolled away. There was a pedestal in the center that was believed to have Jesus' body laid on it. Yeah, obviously it was empty. But there was a sign that said, he isn't here because he's been raised from the dead, just as he said. Come, see the place where they uh, laid him. Yeah, it is from Matthew chapter 28, verse 6 that we read. This snapped me back. Right, he isn't dead. He, he's alive now. I felt like I had been splashed with cold water. Brothers and sisters, again, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. With the resurrection of the Lord, we must remember that our sin was re redeemed by Jesus' blood, which shed, was shed on the cross. By the blood of Jesus, all people have a way to be forgiven. Almost all 50 of our states have a shelter-in-place order because of the coronavirus. As we all know, it's highly contagious and has no cure. So, gathering can only be 10 people or less. However, last Sunday, a CNN reporter in interviewed a person who was pulling out her vehicle from the church parking lot after a large gathering service in Ohio. Are you worried about being infected? No, 
I'm covered in Jesus' blood. I'm covered in Jesus' blood. There are other people who don't go to this church who, uh, who you might infect. I go to the grocery store every day. I'm in Walmart, Home Depot. Um, look at those people. They could get, uh, get me sick, but they are not because I'm covered in his blood. I want you to listen carefully. The blood of Jesus Christ gave atonement for our sins. Because the wages of sin is death, you were supposed to die, but Jesus died in your place. So you no longer have wages of sin because they were redeemed. Jesus, the Son of God, died by shedding his blood on the cross to redeem all who believe in him, and that's you and me. His blood has washed away all the sins of the world and will continue to wash sin away. So we say that the blood is so precious, and this is the reason we praise Jesus and his blood. Jesus' blood is for washing away sins. Matthew chapter 26, verses 27 and 28. Then he, Jesus, took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Our enemy, Satan, persists in attacking us and tears at us using our sins. It keeps coming and whispering to us, you are a sinner, you are nothing, you have committed a tremendous sin, you cheated. The reason Satan keeps reminding us of our sins is to make us fall. It is here that we need to think of Jesus' precious blood. We must recall that the blood of, blood of Jesus Christ has washed away all your sins. When Satan attacks again, proclaim, I am forgiven by Jesus' blood. And since we are in a pandemic, say one more thing, six feet away. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 22. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most high place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let me read, continue, continuously read 1 John chapter 1 and, and verse 7. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. We should not ask him to be covered by Jesus' blood, but to believe that it has already been done. Be confident in this. Your sins are washed clean by Jesus' precious blood, and our Lord does not remember at all. Romans chapter 9 and verse 9. Chapter 5 and verse 9. Since we have not been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Again, Jesus' blood redeemed our sins. The Bible and church traditions do not teach that Jesus' blood protects us from a virus. To be safe, from the coronavirus, 
you need to pray for protection and follow the experts' recommendations. This is wash your hands, cover your coughs, stay at home um, if you're sick, maintain social distance, and wear a face mask. There is one more thing I want to remember on this morning of a resurrection. The reason Jesus did not stay in Jerusalem, but went to Galilee. Matthew 28 and verse 10, Go and tell my brothers and sisters to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Jerusalem was the capital and a very developed city at the time. It was a city of honor and authority. Religion had also corrupted with worldly power. And it was a city for success. Though Jesus performed many, a lot of miracles and healings, he never did it in Jerusalem. But what was Galilee like? Galilee was a poor rural city where poor fishermen lived, where tax collectors lived, where ordinary people had lived. And the people discouraged most uh, by Jesus' death were also there. And Jesus went to Galilee first. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is the Lord who left the heavenly throne to save you and me. And he is the one who shed the last of his precious blood to wash away you, yours and my sins. And as soon as he was raised from the dead, he went first to those who were discouraged. Dear brothers and sisters of Edmundsburg First United Methodist Church, believe that the reason Jesus is with you today like he did with Mary and the disciples, Jesus gives peace to you. He knows how hard the con condition and situation goes now. The reason Lord is with you, and the reason he is with you is to take care of you, to give you peace. May you be full with the grace of the resurrection. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, most of all, we thank you for sending your only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us. We thank you and praise that Jesus shed the, uh, his precious blood until the last drop on the cross, to wash away our sins. Lord, also we thank you for coming us back to Galilee to comfort the discouraged, the most discouraged disciples. Lord, so we believe you do so. You still come to us who are struggling in this such a dis difficult situation of a pandemic. Lord, come to us and give us hope and give us peace so we may be strengthened by the reason, Lord. We may be strengthened and uh, boldly go to the world and be witness of the risen Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. I would like to invite you to prayer of confession. Let us pray. Merciful God, we don't always recognize Christ even when we are looking directly at your incarnate love. We cling to our assumptions about how life on earth should unfold, forgetting that life in your realm shatters those expectations. Forgive us when we go through our daily routine, 
forgetting to look for the risen one. Forgive us when coming to worship is more about seeing our friend than it is about encountering you and our resurrected Lord. Open our eyes and our hearts, O God, to the full awareness of your presence with us in each and every moment of our lives. We pray in the name of the Christ who is alive. Alleluia and Amen. Please listen the words of assurance. The testimony of all the prophets is united in the message of good news. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Rejoice, for your sins are already forgiven. Amen. Now, I invite you to set your communion table, communion elements near you. Please uncover the bread and uncover wine or juice. Again, if you don't have wine or juice, it is okay. Let us share our greetings. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we thank you for bringing us into this holy and mysterious communion table. As we share the bread and cup, Lord, we remember that you have done for us and for the world. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, your gathered ones, and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one each other and one in ministry to all the world until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again in final victory. The Lord's Prayer Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, I invite you to share the bread and cup, saying the body and blood of Christ broken and poured out for you and for me.
if you are done, please cover all the leftover bread and wine or juice. And later, you can have it, you can share it as well. Let us pray. We thank you for this holy mystery and for your grace that saves us and sustains us in such a time as this and always. Grant us courage and grant us wisdom for the coming of these days. And all the people say, Amen. Let us pray. Mighty God of resurrection and redemption, we offer our gifts alongside our praise. We offer our hands and voices to take the celebration out of this place into a world that desperately needs hope. Accept our offering and bless us. 
May we see excitement in ministries all around the world. May all people see your redeeming love and the triumph of light over darkness. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. This is a day of new beginnings. This is a day of brightness and hope, for God has done wonderful things for us. Go in joyful peace and know that God's peace and love go with you always. Hallelujah! He is risen, I want for you to respond, He is risen indeed. Okay, ready? He is risen. God is good. All the time. God is good. Amen. Amen. Now, one more thing. I would like to invite you to take a selfie, not of me, of you. Please take a picture of your home's home worship. And also I would like to invite you um, to the postlude. Rosemary will play Handel's Messiah. <laughs> 